Um, hi, so my name is Vicenzo. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it's my first time at FrostCon, so I'm not quite familiar with the uh, audience and the technical level of everybody. So if there are any questions uh, from during my talk, feel free to interrupt me. There should be plenty of time for discussion. Um, so first of all, just to get a general idea, uh, how many of you here know of MariaDB? Okay, uh, how many of you actually use uh, SQL on a day-to-day -day basis or? <laughs> okay, so uh, people are familiar, that, that's good, but feel free to uh, ask me any questions if there's something which is unclear. Uh, so the purpose of this talk is to show you how you can make queries run faster, especially analytical ones, uh, using the new features which are now in our latest stable release, which is MariaDB 10.2. So we're going to talk about common table expressions, uh, window functions, how these two work together. And I'm going to go through a few practical use cases. Uh, all of these are actually problems that I had to solve at one point. So the examples are from production. And I'm going also going to go into a bit of details about what the development status is for uh, these features, what's coming up in future releases. Uh, so let's start with common table expressions. So common table expressions are a, a new way to express uh, what MySQL and MariaDB used to call derived tables. So whenever you wanted to do a, a select in a, in a from clause, you would have to create a derived table. Well, here we can define this derived table outside of the current select. So here's the, in red, I've highlighted what is the new syntax for CTEs. We start with the keyword, with. Then there's the uh, common table expression name, in this, call, in this case, engineers. And then we have what's going to be inside this table. So after this definition, you can use the engineer's um, keyword as if it were a table in your database, okay? And then you can select uh, from engineers and potentially filter out uh, other, using other conditions. Here, uh, this is where you use it. So in from clause, we have engineers. Here's the identical query that you had to write before. So here we have the uh, from clause, which has a subselect inside. The nice part is that you can use multiple CTEs, and multiple CTEs can reference each other. So here we start with engineers, and then we go to Europe-only engineers by filtering the engineers' previously defined table. If you want to do this with derived tables, you would have to write a query within a query, and it gets pretty hard to track uh, because you have this nested uh, versus the linear view of CTEs. So from a readability standpoint, CTEs are obviously a win, but th there's more to this. Due to how CTEs work, there's actually room for optimizations that um, the query optimizer can do to give you faster running queries. Um, here's another example. Uh, here we're trying to select, um, to compare how products did uh, in this current year versus the previous year. And here we are using the same table twice. So first we, de we define uh, all the sales for uh, all products in a, a given year. And then we just join them together to see which products have performed better this year as opposed to last year. So, so far, uh, you can identify CTEs using the with keyword. Uh, they are similar to derived tables in that you can actually write, most of the time, uh, identical queries with derived tables. Uh, they can provide you more efficient uh, code, and I'm going to go into details on why this is so in uh, a few of the optimizations that we support. So how do we execute CTEs? So one idea is to just execute the uh, query, which defines the CTE, store it into a temporary table, and whenever you need it, you 
do it again and again. And this is the, the basic algorithm. It, it always works. But if you have multiple references, like here, you have to create two temporary tables, which is not optimal. However, when you do find that you are reusing a CTE twice, it is a good idea to um, create only one temporary table per distinct uh, CTE expression. Uh, this is one optimization, and it helps on um, it helps by, by saving space and execution time. However, when you do this, you cannot perform other optimizations. So it's either this one or something which um, MariaDB has done with views before. And it's something we call CT merging. So here we have a select. We're selecting engineers from, um, from a, a table that we have already. And you can think of this like a view. Uh, the trick is that since the CT is used in a join, but there is no group by or distinct clause um, inside the CT, you can actually merge these two queries together to perform just one uh, simple select. So you can transform from the CT expression to a um, single select query. And in this case, the query optimizer has a vision of, across all the tables involved, and it can perform all the possible optimizations that it can. So by rewriting the query, you, get, um, you give the optimizer a chance to do uh, as much as possible. OK, and this is similar to how views work already. This is not something new. It's just that due to how we implemented CTEs, it, it, this came uh, natural. Now here's a um, different optimization, uh, and this is a alternative to when you don't have the conditions supplied by uh, merging CTEs. So here we have uh, two problems. We have a group by in the CTE. So if you were to merge this in the parent subquery, you would change the results completely. And you also have some conditions in the where clause in the outer select. Well, we obviously cannot merge. However, maybe it makes sense to push the condition from the outer query into the CT, because you're, all, you're still going to filter out things. Um, and if you filter out them before computing a temporary table, this will save on disk space and execution time. So in this case, you get smaller temporary tables, and uh, this will potentially uh, speed up your queries when, when you cannot do CT merging in the first place. This feature was actually implemented by a student, and this is something we are uh, very proud of, that we get to work with the community a lot. So all this was contributed in a three-month period. If you've heard of Google Summer of Code, it's a very interesting project. And if you are in charge of an open source um, project, I do suggest you try and apply. It's uh, something that's very worthwhile. Uh, comparing MariaDB to uh, MySQL and uh, also Postgres and SQL Server. So when, when we try to implement CTEs as well as window functions coming later, we tried to do as, best of, uh, as a similar of a job as other uh, database vendors. So both us and SQL Server uh, support CT merging. And we do condition push down, but we don't do reuse. And the reason why we don't do reuse is because whenever you choose to, to reuse a CT, you invalidate the other po possible optimizations. So that's why we currently do not support reuse, but we are thinking of adding uh, methods to decide whether to reuse CTs or not. So this data is from 8.0. This is from, uh, I think, April this year. Uh, I haven't looked if there's, there have been dif differences. Um, 
But from my understanding, condition push down was not in, in the MySQL plans when I asked the developers. So it's probably still not there. Um, OK, for Postgres, they don't do either merging or condition push down. Maybe if somebody is more familiar, they can explain the reason for this. Um, the only information that we're able to gather is that Postgres considers CTEs as optimization barriers. So the optimizer can only work within the CTE or after the CTE, but not mixing them together. Another interesting feature is that CTEs can be accessed in a recursive manner. I'm not going to go into details on how you can do this, but the interesting part is that this actually makes the SQL language Turing complete. So you can write any program which you would run in a, create in a different language in, with recursive CTEs. An interesting example is that somebody has actually written a chess library for, uh, with recursive CTEs. <laughs> so you can actually play chess uh, with, uh, I think, Postgres server in this case. Um, recursive CTEs are more sanely used for hierarchical queries. So you can, if you have a, a tree, a, uh, structure, you can actually query within the tree, and this makes your life a lot easier when you have to get a list of, say, parts from, for an object or a list of employees which report directly or indirectly to somebody. Okay, so enough about CTEs. Um, the main takeaway from here is that they are essentially views, but they are local to the query. You don't have to create them separately. Uh, you will get better performance if you use CTEs wisely. And with recurs recursive CTEs, you have a lot of power to express um, complicated queries. Any questions so far? OK. Either nobody understood anything, or uh, everything's crystal clear, and this is trivial information. OK, so let's move on to window functions. Uh, this is a project I personally worked on, and it's something that can, can be very difficult to explain to somebody, but it's something that can really speed up queries when used properly. So window functions act like regular functions as well as aggregate functions. So the trick is that they can access multiple rows from the current row that they're computing their value on. which means that with this, you can actually try to eliminate self-joins. So whenever you are joining the same table to itself, you can potentially get rid of that kind of query. And this can sometimes speed up queries that take 10 hours for large data sets to um, fast one minute queries. And I have examples of this. So like I've said, window functions are computed over a sequence of rows, like, sim like aggregate functions, such as sum. But the uh, result gets outputted once per each row in the result set, not once per group. You can find them using the over clause. And let's just go through a few examples to see, to make my point on this. So here we have a, a simple table with uh, with users, they have an email, a first name, a last name, and they're split up by either regular or admin users. If we forgot to add a primary key to this table, we can generate one with the row number window function. So row number here takes no parameters, but it has to have this over keyword right here with empty brackets afterwards. There is a reason for that. And it will generate an increasing sequence of numbers from 1 to 5. This is very similar to a function, uh, a regular function. But the trick is that uh, it has to have an order. So if you, if you look at this number here, this order is not guaranteed. Currently, we will make an exception for this kind of query in, in a future release. but. Uh, as it stands, this order is not deterministic. You can also get this, this order. So we've scrambled them. But you've got an order 
uh, yes, I have an order by email. And I'm ordering the rows by email. They are in alphabetical order. But row number doesn't know which order the rows actually should be looked at. In order to fix this, we have to specify an order by for the row number. So we, we've, we're adding an order for the rows for that window function. Now, what happens if we want two sequence of numbers, one for admins and one for regular users? Well, you can split this up with a, uh, another syntax, partition by. It's very similar to group by. All the uh, rows are split up by the account type. So you can look at it as if the, these were separate tables. And we're computing row number across admins and regular users separately. Make sense so far? Uh, I have another example, and I think that one will clear up how partition by and order by work. Go ahead. And what's the three? No, no, three? So regular users are, they're, they're free regular users. Oh, okay. So there's one, two free regular users, and then one, two admin users. Uh, Yes, it's, uh, it starts a different sequence based on account type. So let's look at um, how, they, how this behaves like an aggregate function. And I think this will make sense uh, how order by works. So say we have this sensor data here. Okay, we have something that which records a value and it puts a timestamp and a value in the database. We have time and value. If you were to plot this data, this, would, this is how it would look like. Now, what, what if we want to smooth this data out? So right now it's noisy. Well, we can use average as a window function to perform a moving average over the data. So here we do average of the values. And now we have to order the values by time so that average knows which part of the data to uh, smooth out. And it will smooth out three rows before the current row and three rows after. But these rows are ordered by time. Okay, so for each point here in the red line, the value is computed by three data points before, three, three data points after, and one data point, the current row itself. You can increase these by making a larger moving window. Okay, and okay. Any questions about this? Let's look at how this moving window works in a numerical example. So it's the same example as before, but instead of average, I have sum here, just so that I don't have to divide by the number of elements in the frame. In blue, we have all the rows which take part in the computation. Red is the row which we are computing the value for. And in parentheses, I have the expression which is actually run behind the scenes. So first, there we sum up over between one preceding and one following, and then two preceding and two following rows. So the first row doesn't have any preceding rows, so it just adds the current row and the row right after. Going back, going one step further, we now have one preceding row, so we're adding the previous one, but we also have an extra new row, so now we're adding both the previous, the first, the next one, and the current row itself. If we move one step further, we start losing rows from the first example there. Okay, and now instead of adding the first row itself, we, we have to remove it, and then it just keeps on going like this. One more step, you can see that even in this case, we start losing rows from the top. And here's an interesting observation. Whenever you advance the window to the next row, you have to do one removal from the previous uh, computation and add one extra row um, to get the, the new value. 
which means that we can actually compute this by just in constant time. So whenever we need to go to the next row, we just add one value and remove one value. And this is constant time, which is what actually makes window functions very fast. Uh, this is the full example. So we can see here that it's pretty symmetrical. You get to add values and remove values uh, as each row go, uh, as each row comes around. Okay, I'm now going to go into the uh, three practical examples which I have. Uh, how much time do I have? I think it should be. Yeah, should be plenty of time. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to have some benchmarks for these results. They are writ they are run on my computer, so they're not real benchmarks, uh, as in very s strict. But this should give you a rough idea of how performance improves with window functions. So what we have here is a bank example. We have a set of transactions for various customers, and we want to get their rolling account balance. So basically, how much money you have in your account after each transaction. And we want to do this for each individual customer. We have a customer ID, a transaction ID, and a timestamp for the transaction. And then there's the amount, either when you pay or when you get money deposited into the account, either positive or negative value. The way you would do this with a regular, um, regular C, uh, SQL query without window functions, you would use a subquery where you would sum up all the transactions from uh, the beginning of time until the current row. Okay, so here we find all the transactions for the current customer, and then we get all the transactions which are previous to our current one, and all these are summed up. With window functions, we, it's a lot cleaner to ex express this. So what, what do we do? We have a sum over the amount. We split the data by customer. We order it by timestamp. And we want to add all the rows from the beginning of time, unbounded preceding, up until the current row. Okay, all these are ways to specify how the frame moves when you advance the row. And it gives you the same result. Make sense? Performance. With regular SQL, no indexes. It's basically all that, all that the database can do without using any additional uh, data structures. Uh, this basically increases in an n squared fashion. 10 times more rows implies 100 times more computation time. With SQL, uh, but with an index, this gets improved. But this will impact um, insert performance, because you have to update the index as well. With window functions, this becomes a linear query, with a slight offset here, because uh, the data set here turns from memory to disk. And we have a, a slight penalty for disk access here as well. But so, from something that takes 4,000 seconds to 500 seconds is a 10x improvement. Another very frequent query is to get the top n values of a certain data set. So in this case, we're going to get the top five earners by department. So what are the top five salaries and who gets them? So here's the data. We have two departments, sales and engineers, each with their own salary and employee name. If you want to get the, the top five earners, you need to count how many people are before you with, uh, that earn more than you. And you only want to add the, to select the values which have as, at most five people that earn more than you. So how do we do this? Well, we, we have to count uh, how many people are not myself, so it, it must not match my name. It must be in the same department as me and it must have a salary greater than mine. Okay, and whoever has, has less than five people like, uh, that match this criteria, then they are one of the top five earners in the department. Now the trick is, what if I also want to rank people? So I want them to have a rank, either one, two, three, or, or so. Well, 
if you want to do this, you have to basically repeat the query, but have it in the select list as well. Okay, so it's the same thing, it's just now I'm counting them and adding plus one so that I get the ranking correct. Uh, notice that there is a then there is a rank here that um, matches, so we have two people that earn the same amount. This causes problems because if you want a dense rank, then it's a bit more it's a bit complicated. But let's see how we do this with uh, window functions instead. We have the rank function, which is only works as a window function. You can partition. You, and we, we just express what we want to compute. So we partition by department, and then we order by salary. And we order it descendingly because that's, we want the top five greatest values. Implicitly, it's, it starts from the lowest value to the highest value. And now you would, you would be tempted to, get, to filter out these so that you get the top five. You would want to do where ranking is less than five. Okay? But this does not work. You are not allowed to use window functions in the where clause. Okay? The reason for this is that window functions are computed after everything else in the select is computed. So everything, is, everything gets computed as if there is no window function and then we add the column afterwards. This has to happen because otherwise you would get ambiguous results. Okay? And this is where CTEs come in. We just wrap that query in a CTE and then filter out the CTE expression. So this is how window functions work with um, CTEs quite nicely. We can also use a derived table, so you can have a select inside the from clause if you want. But uh, with CTEs, it's a lot more readable. And let's look at performance. This one is one of the big ones. So here with regular SQL, once we get up to 20 million rows, this never finishes. Not in the lifespan of the battery of this laptop anyway. With regular SQL and indexes, it gets better, but it still takes a long time after a certain point. With window functions, this actually com com completes almost instantly. Because we're just going through the uh, the table once after we've sorted it. So it just, it's just one sort, and then one go through the table. Uh, sorry, I did not understand the question. Does, the, does Maria have a heading? Y yes, we, we do have. Um, Uh, maybe I'm, I don't understand your. Instead of CT, you just have yeah, ranking less than the ranking twice. Oh, uh, you mean? Uh, yeah, and the query is not having one. Yeah. Then, then. yeah w so, how would you use having in this? I, I'm guessing you're referring to this query, right? Or uh, no, next one, next slide, yeah. next slide, next slide. Yeah, replace query with having. Um. Well, having is computed, uh, so rank is computed after having, so uh, you can only use, um, right. you cannot reference it here. You can only use um, window functions in the order by clause and in, and in the select clause there. Because, because it doesn't exist bef uh, when having is getting executed. Which is why you need to wrap this query up query into a CT and then get the, uh, the results filtered. Okay, and my final example. And th so this example is, um, is again from a similar use case scenario. It's a, it's a bit filtered out, but the idea is that we have a, cer a certain number of machines and whenever a, a, a technician goes and fixes this machine, 
we put a timestamp in the database that service has happened for this machine at this particular time. And you're interested to see what is the average time between services. So let's try and find out which machines break more often. Here's the data, timestamp, machine ID, simple. Now, what we want to do in order to get the average time between services is to get the difference between consecutive services for each machine. Doing this with regular SQL is a bit of a pain. Uh, the idea is to join the table with itself and match the same machine IDs and then look for the time look for the transactions that have a time before the current position. And from those transactions, get the maximum one, so that you actually get the most recent one that is before the current one. And then just do a difference between the current time and the previous time. This is one way to do it. There is probably multiple ways to do it, but I think this, one, this was the simplest one that I could come up with that could actually fit into one slide. Uh, and we have to group by machine ID so that we get this value for each machine ID for each uh, transaction. Now we can do this a lot easier with window functions. We have a nice function called lag, which is able to access previous rows from the, um, from the table. So here what do we do? We get the machine ID, we get a time, and then we, we want the value that was before the current row. So lag just looks one row before. It can take multiple parameters. It can also look at 10 rows before. It just, it, it's a function that takes either one parameter or two parameters. And uh, lag is getting computed by machine ID and we order it by time because that's how we want the values to be sorted. And then you can just do an average from the time difference between the previous time and the current time. Make sense? I think this is way simpler to comprehend than the previous huge blob of select. Time-wise, this is also faster. So no index is unfortunate. With an index, it's not so bad, but uh, at the same time, for a, a um, 10x improvement in uh, speed, a, a 10x increase in data size, you get a 10x increase in time in uh, um, computation time. However, window functions are 10, are 10 times faster because you only have to do one select instead of having to do. Um, I think the way this looks like it's yeah. And so instead of having to do a uh, join and then use an index lookup to find which value is the maximum one, you're just able to scan for the table once after you've sorted it. You can see again the penalty when you're, we're dropping from me in-memory database to disk access. This is normal. And one thing I didn't point out, so let, let me go back to the first example here. You can see that there is a penalty with small data sets. Okay, so there is an, a small overhead when you start computing, but this quickly becomes negligible once you get to a certain point in data size. Okay, so this is an extra step that the query uh, executioner has to perform, but if this step uh, speeds up the previous query quite a lot, then is, this will uh, give you big improvements in performance. Okay, well, that's um, all I have. A summary is that you can use subquery, uh, you can use window functions to eliminate self-joins, and this will potentially make your queries more readable, like we've seen with lag or with uh, uh, the average example. And in a few cases, you can get faster queries. This is not something which is free, so you don't get this speed up without write, rewriting your queries, but it is something that can drastically improve if you're willing to rewrite your application 
to make use of window functions. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, here's a few examples of uh, more window functions which we support. The, this is a, a full list. We don't support group concat yet, but this is something that we are planning to do. It's just been a technical difficulty in getting it to work correctly. And this is a few things that we don't support yet. These are um, a few features which are planned for the next release, 10 free. So probably all of these will be implemented in the next uh, stable release. Right. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions. Sorry? Which MariaDB version? Uh, this is MariaDB 10 too. It's not the default version which you find in Debian, you're, so you have to get the custom package. But we do have uh, custom repositories that, that make installation of 10.2 in uh, Linux distributions simple. Okay, so if there is no questions, you can still find me around, so feel free to ping me. Um, thank you very much for coming. <laughs>